What's up, you guys? I am Mania. Welcome back to my channel. Y'all, I want to finish talking about um, what we was talking about in the last video before my microphone really interrupted our conversation by going dead. Um, so <laughs> I hope everything is okay with this microphone, y'all. I'm just now getting this microphone, I'm trying to, you know, figure out how it works. But I didn't charge it the other day, and then I had was recording with it for about an hour and a half, so I just think it went dead from that. So hopefully we don't have no issues this video, y'all. But I wanted to pick up because I didn't get to read to y'all what I wanted to talk about um, with the guy's message about his wife, how the music has impacted his wife. So I want to read that comment that the guy had put. But that's what we're going to talk about today is how the music affects us. Because we got to understand that the senses that God gave us, which is our hearing, our ears, our mouth, our eyes, our, our, our ability to feel, touch, you know, our five senses, God gave them to us for us to navigate the world, for us to be able to use them to survive out here. We need all of our senses. We need our nose. We need our mouth. We need our ears. We need our sight. We need our hands. We need our sixth sense, our feelings. Like, you know, we need, we need those. Um, and we need those to navigate the world. We need those to be able to pick up and, and learn, communicate with one another. This is how, what we use to communicate with one another. Um, so I wanted y'all to understand, I, I mentioned this in a video a couple months ago, you know, about how the devil will use your senses. These are your portals, how the enemy gets in through your portals. And one of the ways he get in through your portals is through the e your ears, through your ear gateway, through the words that come in through here that then impact your brain and your thinking, your perception, it impact this ends up impacting how you feel. It trickles on down. It's like everything comes in here and then it like trickles on down into your system. Now you're feeling a certain way. So um, we got to understand that everything that God does for us, every bit of God's creation, the enemy wants to pervert it because you know, he want to go against God in every way that he can. So anything that God set up for our good, the enemy wants to pervert it. He wants to pervert everything, manipulate everything that God has set out. That's why he is the counterfeit. He's the counterfeit, like your counterfeit dollar bills. God is the original thing. The enemy is the counterfeit. He's the fake. He's the flop. He looks a lot like the real thing. That's why he can, you know, appear as an angel of light, but really be deceitful. He's very charming, very manipulative. He's the father of lies. This is why he's like that because he wants to be God. So he has to manipulate so he can act like he has some power that he does not, but he actually does have a lot of influence. And this is why we need to understand when we're being influenced by the enemy. It doesn't just show up as somebody that's just raging after you. This is why oftentimes when we're in these relationships, you know, we would be like, oh, they were so, they were so cool at first. They were so charming them first couple weeks, them first couple months. Because they had their mask on. They had the representative on. And slowly but surely, as you get comfortable, they start to lift it up. They start to lift it up. A lot of times, it be there from day one. But you're not, you're not spiritually in tune with yourself. You're not spiritually in tune with others. You're not mentally sharp. You're not spiritually sharp. So you just ignore a lot of things. And oftentimes, your intuition, your intuition, your sixth sense, those feelings, those little feelings that you feel in your gut, that you feel in your second brain, your gut, your stomach is your second brain. It works in cohesiveness with your actual brain. It sends signals. It's, it's just interesting how God has designed our bodies, but because we're so un we're not in tune with our bodies, because we're not in tune with ourselves, because a lot of us don't like ourselves, a lot of us hate ourselves because of things that has happened to us things that we have not accomplished, things that the world puts on us and projects onto us and makes us feel ways. We don't even like ourselves. So we don't even believe in ourselves. We don't even believe ourselves when we're feeling these feelings that when our intuition is alarming us, that things is happening and something is wrong. We don't even listen to it. Like I said in my last video, a lot of times, when these things go wrong with people in our lives, a lot of times the signs are already there from the beginning. When you sit there now, after you get out of the relationship or maybe months into the relationship or whatever the, the dynamic is, 
you look back into that friendship or whatever, and you be like, dang, that sign was there when they did this. Like, I, like it just, it all starts to add up. It'd be like, wow, all of this happened. And I was just totally oblivious. Or maybe you wasn't, you, you felt that your intuition was alarming you. Like you got to pay attention to your body. Your body is everything. Your body is meant to protect you. Your body is your safe haven. But a lot of us, we don't value our bodies. We give out our bodies. We, we let people just harm our bodies. Our bodies have been harmed since youth. Our mental part of our body has been harm so because of that it has warped us and now we're not we're not in tune with ourselves we're not in tune with these things and now when people come around and they're a threat to you you don't even listen to your own body that's trying to save and defend you your body is your fortress is there to protect you your gut is there your intuition is there and it's trying to alert you it's trying to protect you it's your God-given gift. He gave that to everybody. And for a woman, yours is heightened. Yours is, hi yours is heightened. And we don't listen to it when it's there to protect us. So we'll let people manipulate us. We'll let the enemy get in. We'll open the door for the enemy to come in and deceive us because we don't know who we are. We don't value our own home. We don't value our own bodies. We don't value our own mind, our own beliefs. And we let everybody else project onto us what we should be doing, what we should be thinking, what we should be feeling. We let them do that. And we let the music do this. So let me go and read. I read this in the last video, but I'm going to read it again because I really like this. Um, it was some, somebody who commented this in the video that I was discussing in the last one about, um, you know, how it was a, a podcast talking about how these new rapper girls are influencing the young girls and influencing the women, period, to become these 304s, they say, um, you know, to be promiscuous. They're influencing them to leave their, their men and to, you know, talk down on men and to use men and to use their body to, to get what I want, my body, my choice. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But let me read this. So it says, music is frequency programming. It's frequency programming. It's a set of sounds and synchronicities and beats. Even the sirens, they use their sounds to deter the, the pirates when they were driving their ships. They use them to deter them, to make their pirates crash because of the noise. Like noise, the vibrations, even the, the wind outside, it makes a noise like you see what noise signifies things when you hear the ambulance driving past you don't have to see it but when you hear that siren when you hear that noise it's alarming you of something and you know what it means somebody is in danger somewhere someone needs help somewhere so that sound is programmed into our heads that something is wrong when you hear any alarm that sound the sounds alarm you to do something it, it awakens you it brings attention um your regular alarm to use to wake up in the morning the sounds we have understanding just off a of sound you don't even have to have say no words but the sounds alone mean something different sounds means different things so we have to understand the importance of sound frequency um so it says music is frequency programming. Music is mood management. Thoughts are spiritual conversations. Thoughts trigger emotions. Emotions are language of the soul. Emotions emit a frequency called feelings. Yes, because your emotions, they tell you how to feel. When you're thinking something, you think in something, you're going to begin to feel it. Like I just said early, it trickles down. It comes in here. And then it plays around up here and then it starts trickling down into here, how you feel down here. It starts to trickle down and it, it affects how you feel. So it says emotions emit a frequency called feelings. Feelings are the language of frequency. Emotions regulate mood. Yeah, because when you have these certain emotions, you know, it'll change your mood. You'll be thinking and your thought, like you'll be thinking some happy thoughts You'll be thinking some sad thoughts. And all of a sudden, when you start thinking the sad thoughts, now you start to feel sad. 
or you think about about what somebody told you that was negative and now it affects how you now feel about yourself. Now it affects your mood where you was just happy, go lucky. Somebody came and spoke some words through this gateway. You received it up here in your transmitter and now it's affecting how you now feel. It's affecting how you feel. So it says mood mitigates, it says emotions regulate mood. Mood mitigates what a person is motivated to do. It, and it's true because when you feel sad, what do you want to go do? I know what I do. I'll go eat. Anything I go eat. <laughs> I eat when I'm happy. I eat when I'm sad. I just like to eat. I just like to eat. Eat when I'm bored. Especially now because I don't smoke no more. Smoking used to be my go-to thing. Now I don't smoke, so it's like, what else am I to do? You know, I do read and I pray and all of that, but it's just still something physical that needs to happen for me. So I'll go eat. But this is what we do when we fill in all of these emotions. Because even when we want to celebrate, we're in a happy mood. We want to go out and celebrate. Let's go out to eat. You know, we use food as a coping mechanism and as a celebration too. When we celebrating, you know, these holidays or birthdays or whatever, food. Food is nine times out of ten what's, what's, what we're celebrating around. We're never going to have celebrations without food. Um, everything has food. Our baby showers, our weddings, our birthdays, funerals. You know, everything has food, no matter what you're celebrating. We have food there. Okay. So it says, mood is the messenger. So it says, mood mitigates what a person is motivated to do. Yeah, even when, you know, if you feeling betrayed, what that might make you want to go do? It might make you want to. <laughs> um, so that's why we have to learn how to regulate our moods. We have to learn how to. And I know for me, that has been something that, you know, I have truly been working on. I ain't all the way there yet because it's like this levels to it. But that was a major component of emotional intelligence that I lack, which is that self-regulation part. When someone triggers you, how you react after that. Everything isn't about this or cussing them out just because somebody did this or said this. It's about really learning how to regulate your emotions. It's okay to feel. Allow those negative emotions to flow. Feel it. Feel it. Process it. Get mad. You know, and I realized, too, a lot of my anger that I used to have, I'm not as angry no more. Like I told y'all before, I don't have road rage like that no more. I don't have a lot of those issues no more because I know I'm not so easily triggered by other people. I still get triggered sometimes, but it's not like, oh, I want to, that's, that, that me wanting to control has let up a lot. So I think that's why I just be like, man, whatever, man, whatever. But there are still some instances where I'm like, you really, you really taking me there, especially when you insult my intelligence. It's like, you, yeah, but I'm trying to learn how to just regulate. Feel how you feel, let it get out, but it doesn't mean that you have to attack this person. It doesn't mean that you have to, you don't have to go there. You don't have to, you, don't, you can feel those feelings and you can feel betrayed and you can feel hurt and you can feel like somebody, you know, has wronged you and you can feel like, you know, people, you're not, you're not being validated or whatever it is that you feel. It's okay to feel like that, but it's not okay to allow that feeling, allow that temporary mood to dwell longer than it needs to. And then to let that mood impact how now you react to other people. Because now you got to think about once you react, what is that going to happen? What what's going to be the after effect of that? What's the aftermath of you reacting? What will it end up? You got to think about the repercussions and the consequences that you're going to face after you react. Um, and sometimes it's something that you don't want to happen. Okay, so... So it says, mood is the messenger of the soul. Moods are the flavors of the inner spirit man. Essentially, moods are the fruit of the inner spirit man. Music is the mirror that it reflects who is being worshipped. Worship is celebration. Whatever you celebrate will come to you willingly. So this is why we have to be careful about who we're celebrating. We, we got to realize who is being worshipped in this music. Like y'all girl Beyonce, they say she worships the, the goddesses, them demonic girls that, so we, I'm I, like, I've been doing a lot of studying, like, that's why I just wanted to hurry and get this video, video out, um, 
so that, you know, I can post because I'm, I'm doing a lot of studying and stuff. And it's just so much that is being revealed to me that it's crazy. But, you know, they worship these sirens and they worship these, you know, demonic deities. They worship them and their music because they worship them and their music is surrounding them and worship and celebrating. The, the, they're celebrating these people, celebrating their causes, celebrating how they want to impact people. They're celebrating them like they did in the biblical text, which is what I'm reading right now in Kings, you know, with Solomon, how, you know, you intermarry with the wrong woman, with the woman that God told Israelites not to intertwine with. And you did that. And now you start to build um, high places for, for their gods. You start to put their worship into your own people. And now you get your own people to go astray from God because of the worshiping, because of who you're celebrating. You got to be careful about who you're celebrating. And when we listen to certain music and that's promoting these demonic deities, we're also too worshiping them. And now it says, it says, whatever you celebrate will come to you willingly. So if you're celebrating these demonic goddesses and gods and these foreign gods that are not our God, the creator, if you're not, if you're celebrating these people, their energies are going to naturally come into you. The things that they do are naturally going to draw into you. You're going to be more susceptible. You're going to be more open. You're going to be more open to receiving them. You're not going to be aware of when they're trying to pollute you and destroy you. You're not going to be aware of how they're affecting you. This is why you got to pay attention to how you feel after you listen to certain things. Before you listen to that song, was you feeling all raunchy and naughty and just wanting just to have all types of wild sex? Were you feeling that way before you was listening to the music? Were you feeling that way? Were you feeling like you wanted to fight? Were you feeling angry? Were you feeling sad before you started listening to, the, to that music? How are you feeling? Sometimes because you are sad and because you are going through some of the things that these artists in their music speak about, you might actually be going through it too, so you relate to them. Like, I know a lot of people talk about Raw Wave. I don't personally listen to Raw Wave. I do like the Rags the Riches song, but that's the only song of Raw Wave that I listen to. But I do hear how people always say how he talks about how he makes them sad. And a lot of people who gravitate to his music is because they too feel sad. They too have a weakened spirit because of their trauma, their life, and even things that are still going on in their life. And they just feel worthless. They feel, they feel like him. They feel like they don't matter. They feel unloved. So you gravitate towards these, this music that, too, that you can relate to. That's ultimately what we do when we can relate to a song. That's why we listen to that song because we can relate to it. But then they might just start to throw in hidden messages in the song and just through the, the vibrations of the song, it now starts to affect your spirit. And if you're listening to this stuff all the time and they constantly talking about being sad about the past, about people, when you focus too much on the past, it's not like you cannot, you can never erase the past. Because the past plays a big part to who you are today, whether it's the good or bad of where you are today. Your past decisions, your past, you know, choices and everything that has happened in the past, even things that might not have necessarily been your decision, but something that was done to you in the past. It affects who you are today. It affects how you feel. It affects how you think. It affects how your perception on about other people. It, it affects how you perceive yourself. It affects that. So when you listening to these people who are talking about certain things, you too are going to adapt their ways. And then you're going to take on that. And what they do might not be what you need to do because you don't know what constant state that's still putting them in. And when you're celebrating these people, you begin to take on their practices unknowingly you're like it says here whatever celebrates this is music is the mirror that reflects who is being worshipped like that dang on beyonce girl she worshiped these false gods that have certain agendas 
Same with all the other rapper girls. Y'all promoting this sex. They promote in the spirit of lust. Like I said, we're going to do a video about each of the deadly sins coming soon. Like I said, y'all just been doing a lot of studying and stuff. So it's like, and I be just, it's just so much. It's so detailed. It's so in depth for me because when I'm reading, it's like me reading the Bible teaches me about everything. I'm learning history. I'm learning about science, geography, just, and I'm really just trying to find out who we are, especially as black people. I'm just really trying to, you know, God is just leading me the way with this thing about our community as the chosen people, as God's chosen people. Um, but he chose us amongst all the people. And I'm just trying to really figure out a lot of things because we don't have identity. We don't have our own identity. We are so assimilated into them European ways that we don't even embrace who we really are. We want to be like them so bad that we don't even understand that we're uniquely set apart. We're our own culture. We do our own things. And other people actually be wanting to imitate our culture. Yet they talk about us, but yet they don't have the vibe and a wave like we have. They don't have that. And they'll try to imitate us, the same ones that they condemn. So I've been doing like a lot. I'm just doing a lot of studying and trying to really break down. Like That's why it just takes me so long to study because it's like, it, it just so detailed for me. And then it makes me research and one thing leads to another. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So that's what I've been doing a lot of. That's why I'm delayed with doing this video and a lot of my videos that I got up here on my list of videos that I need to do. Um, but anyways, we got to pay attention to what we're listening to. So let me finish this and hurry up and get to that little message so we could talk about what the R&B music has done to this guy's wife, he says. So it says, whatever you celebrate will come to you um, willingly. And then somebody he said, look at women's reaction to Michael Jackson and Prince. I don't really know much about their reaction to that because I don't care about Michael Jackson or Prince. Um, I don't listen to them. You can, I can't tell you one song about even one of them. That might be sad to say, but that's my truth. <laughs> I don't, I'm just, you know, I'm a little, I don't be listening to all that. Like, I don't be listening to all that. So I don't know a lot of old songs because I listen to my time of music. I'm not, I don't listen to all of that. I don't even really be listening to music like that, but when I do, you know, I'm a little, a little ratchet with it a little bit. So I be liking my little, little baby and stuff. Um, but let's read this, this message, this comment that the guy said. So he said, let's make sure my mic's still good. Still good. We still good. Um, so it says music was the end of my 20 year marriage. So this is the guy in the comments, Mr. Lester, Lester, Mr. Lester Wallace. <laughs> If y'all watch Barbershop, then y'all know, you know, and even with that, things that we watch, your, the, your eyes will deceive you. Your eyes will, like, this is one of your portals. This is one of your portals. That's why things that you see, you then want to go act it out. You watching them flicks. That's why stop watching them flicks. Stop watching. Even with, on social media, you see how people watch everybody's relationship. So now they want what this person appears to have or appear to do. Now everybody wants to mimic that in their own relationship. But you don't you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes of these people. Like, like Russell and Sierra. Everybody say they want to Russell. Do you know what Russell does behind the scenes? You don't really know. You don't know what people do. You don't know what's really going on. Most of these relationships that people put on pedestals end up coming stuff come out later and you'd be like, nah, that, I would have never thought that. They, they always took these nice family pictures. When they get online together, they seem so happy, go lucky. Yeah, because it's called a front. It's called an image, like most people do. They have an image that they show up to society as. Many of these families want to, look at how they do all this keeping the secrets in the family because to protect the family's image. We don't want to look like this nasty, perverted family that does all this stuff. That does all this stuff to the kids. We don't want to look like that to the world. We don't want to look like that to the congregation, to the pastor, to 
everybody. We don't want to look like that. We want to show up looking like we got it together when really it's a mask. It's a front. It's a lie. And the Satan is the father of lies. So if you're so busy worried about an image but not worrying about the true atmosphere that you're in, if you're one of those people who want to show up to society like you in this perfect marriage, perfect relationship, or that everything is just glitter and gold, that you come from a perfect family, that there's no problems in your family because you want to present like you came from a nice, wholesome family who went to church every Sunday and went to Bible study and did all of this stuff. Yet behind the scenes, after leaving the church, after leaving Bible study, after leaving Sunday school, Saturday school, whatever other type of school, after closing the Holy Grail, you still went home and turned the blind eye to people that's touching on the other kids. You turned the blind eye. You're what we talking about. So images mean nothing. You never know what somebody is going through behind closed doors. You don't know. People, people put them on. It's an illusion. Everything you see is an illusion. Like in your car mirror. What is that mirror? The, the, the side mirrors, it'll say objects uh, in the mirror are closer than they appear. Things aren't what they appear. You have to be careful about what you're perceiving something as because of your eyes. Don't let your eyes deceive you. For Eve, eyes deceived her. And then it got us caught up into all this math and all this aftermath and all this BS that we go through out here. Letting your eyes deceive you, seeing things that looks beautiful. Especially women, we are mostly hypnotized through our ears and our eyes and, and the words of others because we let their words impact our ears. Let's read this um, because he, he, said, he said this about, so let's read it. So it says, music was the end of my, so this is the guy Lester. I don't know if that's his real name, but it says, music was the end of my 20-year marriage. I knew something was demonic about it, the way it hypnotizes women. It does. What goes through our ears, it, women, our ears get us into a world of trouble. Our ears let us open the door. We use our hands, our physical touch to open the door for the enemy to come in our house, to come in our life, in our kids' life, and wreak havoc all because of this foolish ear game here that we do not have no protection over this is why you need to pr pray for protection over your ear gates you need to ask god to keep his fiery swords at the pr as protection keep them as the protection of this gateway so that anything that is not meant for your greater good cannot pierce through here and then affect everything else Many of us, this is why we get with these people that when these guys, men, men, I think men eyes deceive them because they go by, by vanity. They go for how a woman look, her body structure, her hair, her, her appearance. Like you let that affect you. Whereas the women, we're affected most by this. We affected a little bit by this too. You know, both of us affected by this, but women, this one is way worse. Way worse because this we don't really look, we don't really care about well I ain't gonna say we don't because we do care about how men look um but oftentimes the look that they're looking at is as far as a man's status and his money a, a beautiful woman will get with a ugly guy if she sees that he has status and money. Whereas though men, they're looking at this, they they get the, the lust of the eyes be really a detriment to them because they go off of what look good. They go off of what look good that really ain't good. Nine times out of 10, your Jezebels, your Delilahs, they're very beautiful women. Very beautiful women. And that's why I, I, I wanted, we're going to do that video, but I really, I'm reading Kings because I really want to read every bit about Jezebel because I have not read it as a like com in completion and before we do that video I really want to break down this girl everything because I want us to relate it to the modern day women and how a lot of us are operating from these Jezebel spirits these Delilah spirits and 
how she too used the vanity, using makeup to deceive. And that's the, one of the things that a lot of men talk about because these women that they meet out at the club or wherever they meet them at, these women will have on makeup and they'll have on wigs and, and we'll have on nails and we'll have and have all of this, have on waist trainers, have on everything to deceive your your who you naturally are. And that's why these men get with you and they even lusted after you. They the lust of the eyes has caught them. Your appearance has caught them. And now when they get you home and they get you, y'all have y'all rendezvous. And then all the wig fall off, the makeup smear off because of after a good time. You take the waist trainer and the corsets off. <laughs> we take all of this off. So this is what the guys be saying. Like the, you know, women are catfish and they want that's why they want to see what you naturally look like because they're like, we don't want to be deceived. I, I thought you looked this way, but really I get you home. Now you look this way. So it's like this girl I'm looking at now versus this girl I saw at the club. Dang, who are you? You're not that. And makeup, you know, makeup can really change everything. Like hair can really change your whole look. Um, you know, so anyways, let me finish reading the thing. <laughs> because it was just funny to do that. He said, you bees be catfish. Like, you know, uh, and I just, every time I hear it, I be just laughing. And it ain't, it's just like, women do themselves up because if a lot of women was to really come out in their most natural form y'all gonna be looking like can you get yourself together <laughs> like if y'all really want true natural form um but i know they they had natural form back in the day because they have access to all of this stuff that we have now so but let's read this. So it says, music was the end of my 20 year marriage. I knew something was demonic about it the way it hypnotizes women. I told my wife I wasn't really feeling the R&B sex music she was listening to 24 seven. I'll never forget she was in the bathroom one day doing her hair and was listening to this song about a dude saying, I'm gonna take your girlfriend cause you can't do it like this or some sh like that. <laughs> he said, a week later found out she cheated on me that music, along with that thought dressing and TV shows like Housewives, was all demonic. I remember looking in my wife's eyes one day and there was nothing behind them. She left me and our family and is now running the streets, getting flown out by different dudes. It's sad, man. <laughs> so somebody will say, ouch, keep some things private, find another way to vent. No, this is stuff that needs to be talked about. And that's the, my problem with people. Everybody wants to keep stuff private that needs to be discussed because we wonder why these same issues keep plaguing the world, plaguing our community, but yet we don't want to discuss nothing. We don't want to be real with what's really going on. We don't understand the true spiritual attack that is especially on the black community. As the Antichrist said, which is y'all need to go watch that Antichrist video if y'all have not watched that video on my page. I link it in almost every video in the description box. Y'all need to watch that video where the Antichrist talks about his agenda against the black community once again this is how you know we're the chosen people and like i said in that other video um you know why the black community is cursed it's a plague on our community it's a dark cloud even we're gonna we're gonna talk about it when i get to my next video about the black community i'm gonna talk about that dark cloud because we're gonna talk about it because it's all scripture it's all biblical it's all there it's all there. God ain't never left or forsake us, but he's dwelling in the dark cloud over the city. So he's sitting watching everything that's going on in our black towns. All the havoc that's going on in our towns. He's watching it. He is seeing it. He's sitting high and looking down on everything. He's allowing a lot of stuff to transpire because are being cursed for worshiping these false gods. Like y'all worship these Beyonce's and all of these celebrities that I did in that, um, go watch that video where I was talking about God said to stop the idolatry. So y'all need to watch that video, Antichrist video. Y'all need to be watching that stuff. But so let's see, I want, I want y'all to, um, I want to go to, where's the other message that the guy said? Uh, Okay, so somebody in the comments has said, man, I'm sorry to hear your 20-year marriage ended. I love to hear your story. Number one, looking back, were there any red flags? Two, 
20 years of marriage and she goes to being flown out, she must be hella attractive. How old is your ex-wife? Three, has she tried to come back? I ask because they usually do. And they usually do. Once you get out here and realize the grass ain't green on the other side, this is why true advice, understand what you have. Don't let other people trick you out your spot. Don't let your mama, your, your aunties, cousins, brothers, sisters, men and women, don't let people trick you out your spot with your partner. If you have a great partner, if you have a great union, because everybody doesn't have a great union. If you're in a toxic situation, yeah, you need to depart if y'all can't work on that. If y'all can't become amicable and create some harmony for your household, for your children, y'all do need to do, do some separation and let God heal you both. And then if it's meant to be, bring you back together. But if you have somebody like that, overall, you guys, you know, of course y'all argue, you know what I mean? But it's not like combative and, you know, you get to fight and then you get to just cussing each other and, you know, and it's just something that's consistently happening. It's habitual for you. That's something different. But if you know you have a great partner, don't let the outside influences affect that because what seems like it's good, what seem, the grass will seem greener on the other side because you see what is going on in the world. You see how other women, you know, are getting flown out. You see that they, you know, get they go get these BBLs. A lot of the reasons why the girls is going to get the BBLs is because they're trying to attract a rich dude. They're trying to attract these are these rappers and you're trying to attract a certain type of man, but you don't really want that type of man. Men that are interested in BBLs, a lot of times those men have nothing to really offer you on a mental or spiritual level. They might have a lot of money from their lifestyle. You don't know. They might, a lot of these dudes that are scammers, these rappers, a lot of them are spiritually dead. A lot of them are worshiping these false gods. A lot of them going to be beating on you cheating on you, bringing you back STDs, having babies on you. They're going to be disrespecting you. They're going to have women coming to you, woman to woman. They're going to have, it's going to be a lot of havoc being with those type of guys. But girls are getting BBLs to attract a certain type of guy. But when you attract this rich man, you got to understand that he might not give you time. He might not give you the time that you're looking for. Most of these women out here, you want a man that's going to give you time. These men that out here that are making all of this money, they don't have time to sit up around you all day like, like these bums do. They don't have time to lay up in a house and be there when you get home from work because they have vision. They have things that they're working towards. They have to keep the money flowing in. So they're not going to be just sitting at home like Boo the Fool waiting on you, waiting on you to come home and, and, and being your slave and all that. They're not doing that. So you got to understand the type of man that you're trying to attract you have to understand the type of man that you have. You have to understand that the grass ain't greener on the other side. And sometimes you let your the outside people affect your union. But only unions that can be easily broken by outsiders is unions that don't have God at the forefront. Unions where both parties don't seek God for counsel. God, the, the God not your pastor for counsel. You don't pray together. You don't practice your beliefs together. You're not harmonized. You're not, you're not spiritually one. You got these beliefs about how a household should be ran and this person got these beliefs. Granted, men and women do things differently, but the foundation should be the same. The principles, morals, and values of the relationship of the structure for the kids should be the same. You should be on the one accord about not allowing your kids just to be everywhere been in the night of everybody's house. You should be on one accord about that. You should be on one accord about the privacy of your children, about the respect of your children in the house. If family comes to visit, what y'all should be on a one accord with how your household is ran. And when you're not on one accord with the, the basic principles and structure for your union, yeah, everybody gonna be able to have influence. The enemy is gonna easily be able to get into your household, get into your union and deceive it. Okay, so now he responding to the guy. He says, so red flags. She had two children before from a previous marriage. She's not religious. And by that, I mean, she didn't appeal to a higher authority for her morals. Red flags. And that's true. This is why you cannot be. We're going to get to that. Let's finish reading. He said, red flags. At the 18-year mark, when things started falling apart, she got plastic surgery. 
The kids was almost out the house. R&B music, night and day. Expensive bags and shoes. Instagram account open. Asking about going to a swingers club. An offhand comment about a friend's open marriage. Is she attractive? I'd, get her, I'd give her an 8 out of 10. Her age, 44. During the initial, during the initial separation, after I caught her cheating and moved out, yes. Although I really, oh, because I think she he said, was there, the person had asked, was there signs? And, you know, this is what him, he's explaining. And he's saying, during the initial separation, after I caught her cheating and moved out, yes. Although I really think we could have stayed together if I allow her to have her midlife crisis. And he puts her midlife crisis in parentheses as being sexually promiscuous. And I wouldn't have minded to since the kids were gone, but because I'm Christian and I'm in ministry, it, would have, it wouldn't have worked. My biggest mistake, my biggest mistake was marrying a non-Christian, but I wasn't Christian at the time either when we met. But it comes down to what a person tells themselves what they will or won't do. Promiscuity for her was never really wrong. So her, the wife didn't think it was wrong to be promiscuous, to have her free will, to have my body, my choice. I can do whatever I want. This is my body. And the key takeaway from this was when he said, my biggest mistake was marrying a non-Christian, but I wasn't Christian either at the time when we met. But it comes down to what a person tells themselves they will or won't do. Promiscuity for her was never really wrong. And a lot of women who carry that Jezebel spirit who wants to sleep around, you know, oftentimes it could have been something from her childhood, maybe that she you never knew. Some of these women do feel like because they've been with this one man they at 20 years old, so they've been together 20 years, they 44. So she got with him at well, she's 44, so she got with him at, at what, 24 years old? So she probably, she, you know, who knows how old she was when she had her kids or whatever. Um, yeah, so she might, and she, he considered her midlife crisis of being sexually promiscuous. And some of these women do because they be feeling like they, um, they be feeling like they haven't had a chance to experience what else is out there dealing with different guys? They only know you. But my thing is, if you have something good, you don't really need to experience what else is out there. If you have something good, you don't need to go sleep around with the world if you are enjoying what you have. Um, but like he said, the R&B music day and night is what got to her and when the guy in the r&b song said that he gonna make you leave your man <laughs> and it starts to it starts to make you question like dang what he doing like you you gonna do that and honestly as being as being that you know formerly promiscuous woman unless you know what else is out there you don't care about what else is out there you might be curious because of when you hear your when you hear these women in the song say this, and when you hear other girls, you know, talk about their experiences, when you are around these people who have been promiscuous and who have had this size D, that size D, a man that then did them like this, and a man that did it like this, you hear hearing what other people have going on. And now you are curious, you want to know what that feels like. And you're like, well, my man don't do this. My man don't have this. So it makes you curious about that. But that curiosity will lead you to a path that you will end up regretting a lot of times. So that's why I say you got to be careful about wanting to do what the world is doing. Don't want to be of the world and doing what all the other girls out in the world is doing, what all the other guys out there in the world is doing, because that will lead to your demise. That will cause you to have resentment in the end. Listening to what outsiders are saying, a lot of these people, parents, you know, for the men and for the women, because men, Y'all got mothers who ain't never had a good man, who ain't never had stability, who never had a man provide a man that provide and protect for her and actually care about her and pour into her. Your mama ain't never had that. So she don't want you to be that to another woman either. And now she'll start to put stuff in your head about this girl. Some stuff that she's seeing about the girl could be right. 
Because women, we know women, especially when you know how you used to be, you know, you could tell the spirit because a lot of people think that, oh, you don't know me. Like people can say that, but when you understand the spirit, when you understand that we are all spirits and it's certain spirits and certain people, it's either you got the good spirit, the Holy Spirit, or you got them demonic ones. And all demonic ones run the same. They all in a clique. They all in a cult. They do the same things. They have the same agenda to steal, kill, and destroy. They have the same agenda. They have the same agenda. Even with Delilah and Jezebel, their whole agenda is still to get in, to use their vanity to deceive their own men that they are in a relationship with, to have control over them. Like Delilah used her beauty. She used her softness. Like Because women, we know how to be sweet to get what we want, tell you what you want to hear, stroke your ego, make you feel good, put it on you real good, make you feel like the king that you are. We know how to do that. And then we still have that same power to strip you of that. We still have that same power to do so. And because men, oh, a lot of men, they really are weak for a woman. Men are really weak for women. Because it was a blessing to have a woman. That's why God gave Adam Eve. That's why he gave you a woman. He was like, wow, I just like, he was just so happy to have her. Just so happy to have her. She's beautiful, good to look at. That's why a lot of these men be wanting trophy wife. Oh, you cute. Go back downstairs, Sticky. Oh, cute. I love your glasses. Cute. Yeah. Um. But this is why, you know, he was happy to have her because she's good to look at. It was somebody for him to also have. Men aren't, aren't designed to be alone. This is why oftentimes when they leave one woman, they will go to another woman because they ain't designed to be alone. And these women out here, when you have parent, when you have a mother, you know, men and women, like I said, if you have a mother and she ain't never had nothing good shit and she's narcissistic, she has demonic entities living within her and she ain't rebuking them and she ain't doing the work, she's not staying, you know, she's not spiritually well, she's not mentally well, she don't want nothing to be well. She wants to still kill and destroy from everybody too. From her own children, she will still kill and destroy their peace, happiness, joy, take their future right about their hands. They will do, they will have influence on their sons or their daughters and make them feel like, oh, you need to leave him. Oh, this, that, and the third. Child, I ain't gonna sit here and tell all my stories in this video, but you know, it's true. And you gotta realize when you have something good. And yeah, you gotta, you gotta. You got to weigh your, your options. Sometimes it ain't about who can put it on you the best. Now, of course, you want to have a delightful sexual life with your partner. But seeking another man out here that can do that for you, a lot of times them men that can do it better in bed, they ain't no good for you. They ain't no good for you. And because they know they can do it well in bed, they use that as their power, just like women, when we know we can put it on you good, we know we can do this that, you know, others might not be able to do, or they don't do, we'll use that, we'll weaponize that to have control over you. The one girl, I ain't going to say her name, you know, and it just goes the power that, that sex really has over people, um, over men, really, you know, women too, but especially men but the girl she wanted him to try her food <laughs> he ain't want to eat that shrimp <laughs> he ain't want he don't eat shrimp i guess or he didn't she don't know how to cook and he don't he didn't want to eat her food and she said fruit roll up like he said fruit roll up. And if y'all know what you do with the fruit roll up and you know in intercourse if you know what you do with the fruit roll up, then you know. So that was her using it to like as a she was weaponizing the sex that she puts on him, that she does to him, that maybe a, another woman haven't done, you know. So she was weaponizing that. She said, "Fruit roll up, like <laughs> basically saying, if you if you taste it, I'll you I'll do fruit roll up on you tonight, like." <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, shoot, fruit roll up." <laughs> and if you know, you know, people don't, wasn't picking up on it, but. I know because I know. 
So uh, she was like, so he he did. He tasted the fruit. He was like, all right, man. Like you know, men are easily deceived through women for their vanity. And she's a very beautiful girl too. She's a very beautiful girl. And a lot of times men get deceived by these beautiful women. And then women, we get deceived by men too, by what they have and by what they tell us through our ears, through our ear gates, for what they say. They tell us, they, they do like God. One thing about it, that's why I say, this is how you know man was made in God's image because they do act like God. If you really know God, he give you a promise. He give you a hope and a future too. He he sell he not selling you a dream because he really will bring that promise into it will come to pass. It's not a lie. He his word will never return void. His prophecy when he make a prophecy and say this is this and he give you a promise like he promised Abraham that I'm gonna give you Isaac. Like you're gonna I'm, your wife. No, you don't have to. She you don't have to go take her handmaid and have babies. With her sir, with your servants to get your child. Like you don't have to. I told you my promise to you was I'm gonna give you your own child out of your own nutsack and out of your woman's own egg out of her body. You don't need to use surrogates and all this. I the promise was I'm gonna give you a child, and that shall come to pass. But you must wait on it. You must wait. So now they're hoping, they're holding on to the promise that God gave them. And this is oftentimes what we do as women with these men. They give us, they come talking at that BS and I hear, oh, I'm going to get it together. Oh, I'm going to stop doing this. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to man up. Oh, I'm going to stop cheating. Oh, I'm going to cut these women off. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take care of you. Oh, I'm going to marry you. And you hold on. You hold on to what they're promising you and you have hope. You have hope and you hold on to it because of all the stuff that he's manipulated you in your ears telling you. And a lot of times they words return void. It never comes to pass. It never comes to pass. And by time that sometimes by time it comes to pass. Shoot, you didn't checked out already. You don't even want it no more. And sometimes it's really like that with God, too. Like you be held God and get you a promise. Like, all right, dang, how long I got to wait? Now when I finally get it, it's like, dang, all right, finally, finally got it. Took long enough, but it came through at the point in time it was supposed to come through. So one thing about it is God does it too. Because I know I felt the same way. I'm like, you treat me like everybody else. <laughs> you know, going through my feelings and everything. Like, you told me I was going to come to this land. And just like you told Abraham, I'm going to give you a new land. Like, I felt like you told me I was going to come here. You didn't tell me I was going to come here and be struggling. You didn't tell me I was going to come here and do this. But I held on to the promise that you're going to give me this new life that you promised me. You, you, The things that you promised me, you said it was going to happen. So I'm coming here and I'm not. And I'm experiencing the opposite of that. It feels like I'm losing everything instead of gaining the things that you said I'm going to have. And I'm just feeling like, what? Your word must be, you know? But... It did end up coming to pass. It's just certain things that you had to do during the interim. It's just certain things that I had to do during the time for that stuff to come to pass. And it's all on God's timing. In the time while you're waiting, he has you doing certain things. You know, but this is why I also say you have to get with people who align with you. You have to be equally yoked with people. Her, like he said, they at first they both wasn't Christian. You know, and then you end up walking into that lane and you wasn't able to lead her into the light with you. You gave her time. You gave her a lot of time. You gave her a lot of time. Y'all been together 20 years. Y'all been together all these years. And there, I'm sure, were signs before the 18 year mark. You just as caught up onto you don't want to start over either. This is where you're safe, where you built, you know, you invested in this and things that we invest in. We don't want to just see it go to waste. You don't want to just see it go to waste. This is why you will keep trying with the person. But like I said, you have to understand when things has ran its course and you have to, have to also understand what's going to come after that because everything that glitters ain't gold and everything that you see everybody else doing ain't going to benefit you. And with, with people putting all of this fluff into your ears and saying, oh, well, if you break up with him, if you leave him or if you leave her, you'll get this. You'll let people trick you out of your good person. You'll let your family members, because they don't have nobody. They never had a man as good as you. Then once you leave them, 
they ain't like him all this time. Now once you leave him, oh now you cool. Oh now you like him because now that I'm now I'm not with him no more. Now you oh what you what you wanted him for you? Child, I can really tell with some stories about that one. But we ain't, we ain't talking about people today in this video. We ain't gonna mention no people <laughs> no names in this video. Um but you have to be careful about who you get let get in your ear. Friends, family. Even like things I say to y'all, y'all have to know if it applies to you or not. I'm not speaking to everybody. If you know that you're in a union that is, you know, God ordained and that God is in the midst of it, or, you know, if you know that, then what everything that I say in some videos, it might not apply to you. You have to know what applies to you. You can't try to make stuff fit your narrative. You can't try to let everybody's opinions and everybody's advice and stuff affect you. You take what you do need from it because some of y'all are in these horrible situations. Some of y'all really are in some deadly relationships, treacherous. You poisoning yourself and your children with that mess. Ain't nothing godly about it. A lot of times people think that God be bringing two people together God was never even in the midst of it. A lot of time, a lot of these relationships, the enemy has brought them together. But through anything the enemy does, God will always use it for his good. Just like with Judah, Jesus would have never came about. If Judah had did what he was supposed to do, Jesus would have never came about through the bloodline. But because of Judah's, even with Judah's iniquities, the sin that Judah had done, God still used what was what you transgressed the Lord. But through that transgression, God still was going to bless you because the blessing ain't coming directly through you, but it's coming through your bloodline. The Savior is coming through your bloodline. The chosen one, the Messiah, the anointed one is coming through your bloodline. So though you did this, it's okay. It's not okay. You're going to get punished for that. And he got his punishment. But God still never let up on what the promise was to the forefathers, to Abraham, of how he was going to bless his bloodline, bless Jacob. And ultimately, Jesus came through the bloodline of Jacob. So ultimately, you guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. But what I want y'all to understand is that but one, two have to be equally yoked. Stop going after these Jezebel spirited women. We're gonna be, you know, talking about Jezebel and sooner than later. It's coming. I'm trying to, I'm reading Kings now, I'm trying to get through it. But, but y'all have to understand y'all have to understand this music, it can affect you. People, the words, the frequency from the music, the frequency, the, the words coming from the people around you, it can affect you. Just like these songs. The song, um, the um, having them on the weekend. His, I don't know this, how I go. Like, um, how I go. Um, then I'll have it my way. I think. Like, how does it go? Because I don't listen to that mess. It's mess to me. I'm not sitting there saying I'm gonna be a weekend girl. I can have you for this weekend. I'm gonna wait my turn until the weekend. Well, we don't play second best around here. Like. We don't, I, I, I'm just not doing that. There's no way. You can't even pay me. You can't pay me for that. I know. You either all mine. Or I, it's, it's, I'm an all or nothing type of person. That could have to do with my personality disorder. But it's all or nothing. I either have all of you or I want none of you. All that mess that that old lady said in the song, oh, it's better to have a piece of man than no man. You see what the frequency from the music has done to women? Like he said, it hypnotizes women. It will hypnotize women. So all the women that has listened to that song, they now have that embedded in their brain. Well, at least it's, it's better to have something than nothing. It's better to have a piece of a man than no man. So now... You got women that's accepting that. And because of they allowing this, they're enabling the men, they're coddling the men and letting the men just come and give them anything. And then they wonder why the men in turn don't even respect women these days because they see that it don't take much to get nothing. Like it's no chase, it's no real value. It's 
you know, you're decreasing your value by being easily accessible, by being easily able to be letting them get to you. Like, it's it's no weight. They feel like, you know, they don't have to respect it. Men like to work hard for what they have. Even as an adult myself now, you appreciate things more when you had to work hard for it. When you had to, you know, stuff that's just given to you, it's different than when you worked hard. I did all this overtime. I didn't, took hours to do this. I value it now. My hard earned money bought this stuff. Versus when somebody just give you something, it's like, okay, like it was a gift, so I don't care about it. Like, it's different when you're just handed something. That's why men will like, they like to chase. They like to hunt by nature. They are designed to hunt. They are designed to hunt. So if you just enabling them, coddling them, you just make it so easy. It's just so easy with you. It's like, what is, where's is the true value in it? Because it's, it just comes easy. And nothing worth having comes easy. Nothing worth having comes easy. You got to put some work in with that. You got to earn it. You got to earn it. Well, yo, God, you said that's so I'm going to give you respect that you earn. You do got to be careful about some of this music you listen to. Some of it do have some, some good messages. But that mess that girl tell that lady, that old lady, and then you, that's what I'm saying. You be having the old ladies out here that's influencing the young girls. You're supposed to be teaching them better. But because you settle for, for nothing, you settle, settle for crumbs, you want everybody to be crummy like you, settling for crumbs. And then you pass it in. It's better to have a piece of man than no man. And then you wonder why these men starting all these families out here. Because you just allow it. You wonder why you, 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 you be itching your coochie all toe up from the flow up. Because you allow just a piece of a man. You know he over there dipping and dabbling in this girl. And they come back dipping and dabbling in you. And then when you end up with an STD that can't be cured, now you mad at the world. Now you mad at everybody else. We well, should be mad at yourself for what you have allowed that person to do because you have enabled and coddled certain trifling behaviors instead of correcting them because you said you listened to that lady in that song or maybe you didn't listen to your mama or grandmama or auntie who had listened to that song, who had been around who friends that had listened to that song, that has poured that poison into them about it's better to have a piece of man than no man. Now you dealing with pieces of scraps and you wonder why you're in that, that false teaching and you wonder why your children get to acting out and doing the same things. And you wonder why them curses is getting passed on it's because those same behaviors is getting passed on. Cause you're not correcting them. Y'all wonder why so many of these kids is growing up without daddies. Because of how it happened. Look how many situations where you got a side girl. No, a man is married. Yes, the man, that's his fault because he need a full one. If you, if you, you shouldn't be stepping outside your marriage or your relationship anyway. But you know this person in a relationship because for me, I don't care if you marry or, in a, or not married. When you are in a relationship with somebody, and especially if y'all already have children, y'all already in covenant. Y'all already spiritually became one the moment y'all intertwined and bore children. Y'all already have done that. Y'all already are a family. So if you come into another family, you, you as a person that don't have no kids or, you know, maybe however it go, and then you come into a situation where you know he dealing with somebody, you know he got a family, he lived there, you know, you know, and you willingly sign up to be a side piece. And you think that you're going to take him from her by you getting pregnant. And then when you get pregnant and he don't end up leaving a girl and you wonder why he won't leave her. He keeps telling you that he won't leave her. He keeps selling you these dreams through your portals, telling you that he's going to end up leaving her and never leave her. But you held on to hope that he is going to leave her one day for you. And then it backfires because he never ends up leaving her for you. And then you bear a child to him and he might not want that child with you. He might have told you to get rid of it. And I don't believe in abortion. Um, that's why I just believe in be careful with how you move so that you won't even have to do that. Because God said not to shed innocent blood. But you wouldn't even be put in that predicament. Shh, shh. 
you wouldn't be put in that predicament if you had just judged the situation better and you had better discernment and moved around, paid attention to it. Because some people be like, well, he, I didn't know. Because some of these dudes, they will, have, they will make a lot of time for you. And you will think that they don't have no family. But you got, you got intuition. Your intuition always going to tell you when something is off about these clowns. It's going to always tell you. So you know, you know if, if, it's, if it's a pattern, he'll never pick up after he leave you. He don't pick up after certain times. Oh, he always sleep. Oh, he always work. He ain't never got time. All of a sudden, you pay attention to the signs. The signs need it. The signs need it, but you'll sign up to be the other woman. And then when you get pregnant by this man, and now he don't want the baby, and he's telling you, get rid of it. And you're like, nah, like, no. And I'm keeping it, this, that, and that. All of that and all of that. And then when you do keep it and the baby is born and now he neglects that child and he sends that child away because that wasn't the, the baby that's within his covenant, within his relationship with the one who his heart really is with. Because men only truly love one woman. They might have, you know, deal with multiple women, but their true heart is only with one. Sometimes their true heart ain't even with the one that they married to, especially if they just settled for that because they need to have somebody. And she was around when it was convenient for him and when he was ready to settle down or for whatever the, the game was from him being with that person. If he ain't the if, if he don't want you like that and you decide to have his baby, you can't be mad that now your baby don't have a dad. Yes, as a grown up who did some grown-up things and should now handle the responsibilities that come with doing those grown-up things. Yes, he should still take care and handle his business. But for him, that might mean, like God told Abraham, here, send them off. Send off those children. Those are your Ill illegitimate children. Give them these gifts. I'm still going to bless them. I still got them too, but those wasn't the ones that was promised to you. Those are the ones that was born outside of the covenant. Those are the ones that was born with, with the, the women that you your heart wasn't with. Abraham's heart was with Sarah. Those were the ones he wanted children with. He didn't want children with Hagar. But Ishmael was born. And because of the havoc that was going on between Hagar and Sarah, God said, just send them off. Send him and your son off. I'm going to cover him. I'm still going to be with him. Still going to bless him. And he's going to be a great nation too. I'm still going to do good things through him too. But send him off. And these men are forced to be in these positions. I'm not going to say necessarily forced because you chose to do it. But you put in these positions where now this child won't be able to have you physically in their life, the, your presence in their life. Yeah, you might be able to send child support for them, but you're not, your presence isn't there. Because of the effect of how you mess with a woman or you mess with a man who you knew already had a family or who you knew didn't really want to be a dad. And it just goes to both parties because if you know you don't want to be a dad, if you know what comes with going raw in a girl, you know, men know when they're about to come. So it's like, if you know when you're about to let off, why would you either not wear protection? Why would you not pull out? Because the spirit of lust and that looking to feel good, looking for that feel good moment, because it just, it will mess up my nut if I pull out. You have to think about what you're not pulling out can do. Would you not using a proper contraceptive? Would you not like lusting after this girl for her body because she got a big booty and all the flicks you didn't watch, you didn't see what they was doing and the flicks with them big booties, jiggling them and throwing them up and, and hitting all type of holes. And you, your lust of the eyes has got you into this situation. But this is what we're going to really be talking about in the last video. When I do it, I'm going to do it soon, y'all. Um, like I said, I be just so much studying or whatever. But these music this this frequency this your gates your portals the things that are coming in through your portals have an everlasting effect it has an everlasting effect and nine times out of ten it ends up affecting our children it ends up affecting our children this lady here you you didn't care about your, your union no more because of what you was listening to. Now you want to see what it's like to have. Because the man saying that he do it so good. And a lot of women aren't pleased with their men in bed. This is why we, if we stop lying so much to one another and be real, 
But people, we don't want to hurt each other's feelings, but sometimes your feelings need to get hurt for you to get corrected. Because you're not pleasing. Like Men think it's okay. Y'all want to get y'all stuff off. But most women never even experience orgasms. They're faking it. Because they do like you, they do love you, they do care about you, they don't want to hurt your feelings, they got to act like it's a good time, but you're not doing it for them. Or you do that same one, two, bam, bam, thank you, man. You're a quick pumper, it's no foreplay, you're not enticing her, you're not doing that for her. So she's looking for that experience, she's looking to feel delighted. She's looking to feel delighted too. You want to feel good in the experiment in, 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 the, in the bedroom. She wants to feel it too. So when it's one-sided and she will, and that might want to step out on you. If both people are seeking to please their partner, like mind, body, and soul, you wouldn't have to be so many breakups and all of this. Work on making sure you're pleasing each other, mind, body, and soul, and make sure you're working on your own self before you get with people. So that way you know who you are. You know who you are. That way you don't have to settle for things. If you stop settling from the get-go, you won't have some of these issues. But, but yes, we do grow. We grow in the duration of a relationship. You outgrow people if y'all are not growing together. If y'all are not growing together, you will outgrow them. And a person who is a believer and a person that's an unbeliever, if that unbeliever don't end up getting on board, it's going to cause friction in a relationship because they're going to sway you away. Like Solomon wives did him, like all them Israelites who had God as their protector, as their leader, as their God. They led them off of their narrow path to come over here and start worshiping other gods that have actual bad things that they do. A lot of sexual immorality that those foreign gods do that our God doesn't do and that is not okay with that stuff and when you that's why when you deal with people who don't have a like mind like you when it comes to the foundation principles morals and values the same spiritual belief the same belief system when it comes to like the the foundation you know sometimes you might be like you know other type of beliefs like you know goofy stuff like oh well he likes you know, a traditional style house. And I like modern style houses and, you know, stuff like that. That's stuff that can be worked out. But belief systems about believing in a higher power and not, you believe in a higher power, you pray and stuff, and this person don't. So when they see you praying, they're looking at you like you're weird, and that might make you start to wither within your faith. That's why two cannot be unequally yoked. Two cannot be unequally yoked. Two have to be diligently working on their own personal relationships with God. When you have, as the man, when you have a problem with your woman, you should be going to God about it. As the woman, when you're having a problem with your man, you should be going to God about it. And both of y'all going to God about wanting to fix the same thing, God will give both of y'all revelation and both of y'all will be able to come together through God, through him mending it, through him correcting the both of you because God will correct you. So were you blaming your other person? God gonna be like, no, nope, it was nope. This is what you did too. This is what you did. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to stop doing. This is what you're not doing. But we often like to go seek counsel from outside people who may have never experienced that type of love, may never have had this type of person that you had. So they might not get it. They might speak to you from a worldly view of it. They might not have a full understanding of it. You know, um, but ultimately, you guys, pay attention to what you're listening to. Pay attention to who you're around. You can't seek advice from everybody. But through my own experience, y'all, you don't tell everybody everything, not even your own parents. I don't care how close or not close you think you are. They don't need to know every aspect of your relationship. They don't need to know. And what worked for them might not work for you. Some count, seeking counsel is good sometimes to just get a, another opinion to make sure you're not tripping, especially when you're a narcissist because narcissism is running rampant in a lot of people. So sometimes you have to check in with somebody else just to make sure that you're not crazy. 
But ultimately, you take it back to God because God going to reveal it to you. Listening to these words from these, all these outside people, sometimes, oftentimes, it can do more harm than good. They'll have you thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. When you leave them, once you get on that other side, you be like, dang, I should have just tamed my own grass over there. I should have watered my grass, should have cut it, should have got some fertilizer for it, should have poured into it to make it greener. I should have ripped the weeds out. I should have did this, that, and that. Should have filled the holes in it. You should have made your, your original grass. You should have did the work that needs to be done on the grass because it takes true work to be done on grass to get it healthy and green and flourishing. It takes true work. But a lot of people don't want to do... Hey, Ari, be quiet. A lot of people don't want to do the work that it requires. You want to find the easy way out. And sometimes... You know, especially being me as a leader, as a person who leaves, is because I'm I'm patient to a degree, but I'm not going to let you waste all my time because you're not God and you're not going to sell me a hope and a dream and then waste all my life and waste all my best years. You're not going to do that. You need to get yourself together. We both need to be working on ourselves. We need to both be working on the relationship. We both need to be healing from our traumas. We both need to be healing on all aspects so that we can continue to grow together. You know, everybody isn't going to always grow at the same pace. And that's understandable. And you can, it's up to you. You give them time or you don't. I'm not most people and I don't want to be most people. I'm not giving everybody all that time. Because people will waste their time and sell you a hope and a dream. And they not showing you at all. Like if people, hey, shh. Be quiet. If people are not showing you that they're trying to become better, this is steps you have to take every day. Like, talk is cheap. You can't just tell somebody, oh, I'm trying to become better. What are you doing every day? Like, when you're really working on yourself, when you're really trying to awaken and you've had your awakening and you're just, you know, really want to become a better person, nothing happens overnight, but it's the small steps you do every day that leads up to that success that leads up to you successfully outgrowing those old ways, those old habits, old addictions. It's changing things up. Like for this woman, what she needed to change up, stop listening to that mess. You obsessed with listening to this R&B. And this is why a lot of these women out here, this is why they, they so lustful. The R&B promotes intimacy sexy touching all of that and i think for me that's why i'm not a big r&b person but i also too understand how listening to so much of like the trap music probably made me gangsta a little bit you know what i'm saying listening to too much of that made me hard made me angry because some of them dudes be angry made me hate men because a lot of they do is talk about hating men they talk about smoking their own own counterpart, their own brothers, supposed to be brothers. They talk about that. But I do like because they be calling them out. It make, it make me realize that if I see that they be, these dudes, I be doing some sucker-ish, and these other men out here see that other men like them do some sucker-ish, act like some females, be itching like a female, it make me realize, like, all right, I ain't tripping either. Like... <laughs> I, that's why I really do like that music. I don't listen to a lot of it no more, but I do still like my trap. Period. I'm always going to let me some trap. But I think I never was into R&B like that because it makes you just either want to have sex or it just makes you want to be in love. And I'm detached from that. You know, I'm not so obsessed with that. Love is beautiful. Love is great. But love in the way that I need to be loved, mo a lot of these people don't. They don't want to love. People don't want to love you how you need to be loved. They want to love you how they want to love you and want you to accept it and want you to just stay with them because they feel like they love you and they do this and they do that, but they don't do what you need and what makes you feel loved. You can't love people how you want to love them. You love them how they need to be loved. And if you can't do that, you have to just be able to let them go. Everybody is looking for something. Everybody is like a relationship with people. It's a two-way street. And if you only benefiting out of it, 
it's not a, it's not equal reciprocity. And of course, sometimes it's more give and take than in other times. But if it's always one person always lacking, like you always getting the, 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 the ish end of the stick, you're not getting never. It's like none of your needs are ever being fulfilled. It's like, okay, what am I in this relationship for? I'm just here to serve you like a servant. But you don't want to serve me. We're supposed to be serving one another. You know, I point to you. I scratch your back. You scratch mine. I make you feel good. You make me feel good. Like, what? But if I'm always doing all to making you feel good, you ain't never pulling back into my cup, though. You leaving me dry over here. It's the hair over here. My mouth is dry. You ain't ever feeding me. You ain't ever giving me no water. You ain't pouring into me. You just sucking me dry for everything I have. Um... At the end of the day, you guys, pay attention to what you're listening to, who you're listening to, what it's making you feel, how it's making you feel, what it's making you do, how is it affecting your mood, how is it affecting your feelings, how long are those feelings lasting. Pay attention to yourself. Get in tune with yourself. Stop praying. Start fasting. Go without social media. Like, that too is another thing. You see too much. You need to stop seeing stuff. This is why God ain't never want Adam and Eve to awaken by eating that dang on thing because now you awaken and the serpent had tricked her through her ear gates. Oh, you're going to be through your ear and eyes. Oh, you're going to be, you're going to have wisdom. You're going to be able to see everything. You're going to be able to know this and know that. Stuff that you should have never even known. Some stuff you shouldn't even have been exposed to. Because now that you're exposed to it, now it's like, ooh, ooh. And women, we're just, we're such like, ooh. We're like, ooh, ooh. We love pretty things. That's just how it is as being a woman. We love pretty things. We love pretty things. Men, too, they love pretty women. The prettiest thing they care about is women and cars. They like pretty cars and pretty women. We like pretty everything. We see a pretty pair of scissors. <laughs> we want pretty scissors. Pretty pins. I noticed that about me. I just love anything that's pretty. Cute. I love pink. I love shiny things. We just love the shininess. This is why a lot of women go after shiny, flashy guys. Me, I don't like flashy guys because it's like, you doing too much. Calm down. You can look cute or whatever, but don't be doing too much. Like, Look cute, but I don't like overly flashy people who want too much to just bring attention to them. Uh, you know, it's one thing to dress cute, you know, whatever, and, and do it. But when you just got to be extra attention seeking, like like they do with their cars. Men irritate me with that with their cars. Like, why are you making all them car noises and stuff? I know you got a nice car, and I see you got the engine and the all that stuff that they be putting on it to make it make the noise and all that and all of that. I know it's fast. You ain't got to stunt for me. You ain't got to flash your money out. Okay, I see you got a little bit of coin. I see that this. Okay, you don't have to. Okay, relax. Calm down. Calm down. All these tinkling ornaments. <laughs> My God, said. And that daughter's a, we're going to do the video about judgment on daughter's of Zion. Let me put that up on my board for some of the upcoming videos that I want to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because see, that's what he said about these. He's going to humble the daughters of Zion because they, all they do is walk around with their stiff necks, with their tinkling ornaments. Like, all oh, your flashes, like he said with his wife, oh, she started caring about the expensive bags and shoes. And then she get her Instagram account and then she want to parade around on there. Like, it just, Instagram needs to be, it need to be shut down. I ain't gonna hold you. It need to be shut down. The girls is going crazy on there. The girls is going ballistic on there. I'm like, girl, like the, like every birthday, I thought everybody birthday shoots now for a birthday shoot. Like everything is a photo shoot, man. And it's like, they don't even do regular family photo shoots no more. Like, will you get... They going to do on, hey, shh. Excuse this, baby, y'all. They going to do sexy, naked birthday photo shoots. Just to post on Instagram. Where are these pictures going? On Instagram? Like, you're full on naked on here, girl. You're naked. All this my body, my choice. You don't own that body. Even that. 
these sayings, these are incantations, these are chants, these are words, these are frequency of words that are poisoning your brain to deceive. To deceive. Let me, let's look up the definition of an incantation. Because I've been doing some studying because I saw that in the reading. And like I said, like it talks about all of this stuff when you're reading. Um, so an incantation. Let me make sure I'm saying it right. Incantation. Incantation. So an incantation is a series of words said as a magic spell or charm. So it's the use of words as a magic spell. Certain words are a spell. This is the things they say when they go to these rituals and these covens and courts and all these secret societies. They have their sayings. They have their own proverbs, which is your sayings. They're supposed to have impact. They're supposed to speak messages. They're supposed to have, uh, you know, impact on a, a, a group of people. Just like we have sayings, regular sayings that our grandparents and people used to say. I don't got one off the top of my head right now. Uh, but different sayings. Uh, just like reach one, teach one. And... And all of these other sayings, it has meaning to it. So saying my body, my choice, and oh, we have this free will to do as you will. Satan says do as you will. That's his motive. Do as you will. It's your body, your choice. Do as you want with your free will. You don't have to do what's right. You got free will. Do whatever you want with it. You have free will to make the choice of doing right or doing wrong, but understand when you go against God's when you transgress against God and go against the ways that he set for you, he gives you free will to choose whether to do right or to do wrong because he uses that to judge your heart. He uses that to see if you have integrity. He uses that to see if you're one of his righteous ones, to see if you are holy, to see if you are deserving of the inheritance, if you're deserving of the blessings that he has. He uses that for that. If you have the choice to do wrong, can you go downstairs? Okay, be quiet then. You have the choice to do right and then do wrong. You got to pay for that. You have to pay for that. You have to pay for that. God never said use your body to be out here to, to earn money and to bring in all these eyes on you. And then you wonder why. These men are only coming around to screw you, not to stay with you, not to. And then these are the same women, these same girls who do this stuff, posting their naked bodies on all their birth on the birthdays. These naked birthday photo shoots and lingerie shoots online. Like, how do you get online with lingerie? You have to keep something sacred. But they promoting this now as part of this feminism. It's just be free. It's all promoting demonic agendas to be promiscuous to be sexually liberated to just sleep around and just but it ends up depleting you it ends up lowering your value it ends up making you feel like trash when you feel so sexually liberated and then when these people get with you people that are putting these words in your ears these guys that come and tell you oh i want to just love on you oh you look good oh oh i love you they tell you anything that you want to hear to make you feel good because they are lusting over you and then because of the lust that they have for you they have a desire that they want to fulfill using your body they using you as their their rag doll to pump and dump they're using you for that but they're telling you one thing but in their head they see another thing in their eyes, they see you just for this. They see you just for this. But they're telling you another thing. And you're holding on to what they're telling you. But their actions are showing something different because they only see you as an object. And they're treating you like an object. Though they told you I love you and I care about you and all of this. They tell you the things that they want to get what they want out of you. And what they want out of you is to use your body for what they want to use it for. For their own choice. 
their own free will. They want to do what they want to do with your body. And they manipulate you to get what they want out of you. And then after they get what they want out of you, and they no longer have that excitement about you because they got it. Like you're you're easily accessible to them now. They they got what they wanted. You're no longer, they don't have to hunt for you no more because they didn't, they they didn't came, they didn't chase, they didn't got, and now it's time to go do that cycle again with somebody else. They want to chase and hunt and go do it with somebody else and capture them. Lock them up. Then when they do that, to, when they do this to you, and then they leave you and they, they cheat on you and all these things, and you're like, oh, this, that, and that. But in their head, they still objectify you because they see what you have done. And women know you're luring men in with your body. A lot of women lure men in with their body, with their sex, just to lure you in. Because they know men are eye gaze and they're going to look and they're going to try. And then that's what make these women like they'll it'll make you feel wanted. Because you see the like, like you see the girl say, you'll see Ari up there say, oh, you know, when she's trying to clap back at some of the girls, she be like, oh, but your man will your man be in my inbox or your man will be wanting me. Your man love these pictures. You're pleasant on the eyes. You help him bust a nut off. He can, he can, yeah, to your picture. But being wanted, it feeds the ego. Just, oh, somebody want me. Somebody want me, but they don't value you. Be being valued feeds the soul. Having an importance on you. They really care about you. They really care about who you really are, not that mask that you put on when you put on all your makeup and all your sexy clothes and when you get your BBLs and your titties sitting up and all that and all that. A person who value you, they really care about the real you. They really care about when you sad. They really care about that. Same for the men. You got so many men out here who <coughs> they parade around their money. <clears throat> They parade around their money. They sell the money to the, to the girls. And then when she only wants you for your money, and once the money runs out and she's now gone, now you mad. But that's what you, so, that's what you presented first. That's what you presented first. That's what you had as what you had to offer. That was your only thing that you brought to the table was your money. You put that first on the table. You led with that. So now she's going to keep on wanting that. And now once you don't have that no more to offer her, now it's like, okay, what are you good for? You have to make sure you're leading with the right intention. Don't lead with these, these worldly things. Sex, money, looks. Don't lead with that. When you get with a person, don't only talk about what you have. Oh, I got money. Oh, I got a nice body. Oh, I got this. Oh, I'm going to put it on you with sex. Don't lead with that. Because now they're going to keep on holding on to you for that. You're leading them in with that. And then once you take that off the table, it's like, okay, now what's left? I don't want what you have left. What I want, I, that's all gone now. I'm, you know? That's just like on Thanksgiving, you only come up for the macaroni. You know your grandmother or whoever, they, they make the best macaroni. And you know that one family member, maybe they make a good sweet potato pie, good cake or something. And you know, I'm, you're like, I'm only coming just for that because I know they gonna have that. And then when they, when she don't come with that pie and my grandma don't come with her special mac and cheese and it's only some dry turkey left and some cranberry sauce and some dry stuffing and all that is left or dressing, whatever they call it. <laughs> and when that's only left, you like, hey, this is all that's left. I came for the good stuff. No, I don't even want to be here no more. The good stuff is gone. I only came for the food. I came for the good food, not this. This is what's left. I don't want that. That's basically the same as dealing with somebody. And that's like, you only have your mac and cheese is your sex. Your cake is your money. You only have that. When you take everything off the table, they don't care about who you really are. They don't care about your character. They don't care if you're a nice person. 
They don't like not even care if you're a mean person. They might not care about all of that because they only came for what they wanted. They only came for that main meal that they wanted. They only came for that. And now you took that off the table. So it's like everything else is like, I don't want that. You ain't got nothing good. The money gone. Now what you good for? Look at me and just, that's why men, men and women, like people, we, we be trying to talk about each gender want to bash them, but both are just as stupid because men are just as stupid too. Y'all get swindled because of the lust of the eyes. Swindled. Take all your money. All we got to do is use some sex on you. And you willing to give up everything. Just, just sick. And it just, it is. It's like, because for me personally, I'm like, dang, you that. And I can see how men will feel about women because I feel like that about them too. Like, dang, you that. Dang. That's all it is. Like, that's all I got to do. Like, you sweet. You sweet for it. Have some morals. Dang. You know, um, so yeah, y'all, words are crucial. The words that are coming out of your mouth are crucial. They are very important. The words that are coming out of others' mouths are very important. It's a frequency. And you have to know what to do with it. You have to understand what is it transmitting to your brain. That's what you have to do. So I'm going to leave this video here, but understand, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you're seeing. Stop watching this BS out here because it's just that. It's BS. It's all meant to push an agenda. It's all meant to get in your head. It's all about mind control because once you get the mind, everything else follows. This is why manipulation is one of the key things that businesses use, individuals use, because if they can manipulate you and make you feel like you need something, even when you know, I don't need this, look how, and you go shopping. Like that's why women, we go after money so much because the world caters to women. When you go to the stores, this in the aisle, why you, you already just shopped in the store. Now you get to the checkout line. There's more things to entice you. Look how they got, even for the kids, they got the candy by the aisle. So while we waiting in line to check out with our, with our food, our kids are like, ooh, candy, ooh, candy. They keep it there to entice you, to make you feel like, oh, look at this. I, I, ooh, ooh. It's just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Why you think they say kid in a candy store? That's another saying. Like you act like a kid in a candy store. It's like, ooh, ooh, all these color, colorful candies. They're colorful. They look this. This one got these shapes and the shapes, the colors, the we we still do that. We still look at people's shapes, their color, their textures. In the regular store, when I'm at the um, Marshalls, Burlington, we done did all this shopping around here. Now we get to the line. The line long. As we sitting in the line, they got all these cute candles. They got the lip glosses for the kids. They got phone accessories. They got slippers, socks, everything in the line. So while you're sitting there waiting to check out, you already made the decision. I done got enough stuff. Let's go. We sit here waiting to check out. Here comes more stuff to entice you more stuff and us with our eyes as women this is why they cater to women because women we want everything if it like all the stores cater to women because our eyes too deceive us we be buying stuff oh i just need this oh it's just so cute and we'll get to spend it spend it and this is why we about money so bad women are about money because money buys us cute cute little stuff like Men ain't going to buy this. We got to have stuff for our desk and stuff for our house, for the bathroom, for the like, we, little stuff. 
We just want to, oh, it's cute. It's appealing to the eye. Stop. You know? So we got to be careful about what's coming in through these ears and through these eyes. All of them. But that's what we're touching on today, the ears and the eyes. We'll be going more into that um, when we do the lust video because lust of the eyes is serious. So I'm going to leave that video because this video didn't got the two hours long. It was never supposed to get this long, baby. But I ain't been doing a video in a minute, so well, in about a couple of days, probably about a good four, five days or something. So this is well due for you guys. Um, but I hope y'all got something out of this video. Hopefully my sound was good all the way to the end. We still lit up, so it looks like it should be a good time, guys. <laughs> um, but my baby over here going off, doing all her stuff. So sorry about the noise, y'all. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces. <laughs>